Uh, good evening, my name is Michael Olivas. I live on 119 Baxter. Uh, thank you everybody for staying, you know, staying this late, spending your evening here. I've been an East Side resident for over 26 years, and my family even longer than that. We ended up in the East Side because of, uh, you know, projects like this, you know, that increased uh, the cost of living in other parts of town. So we've been displaced multiple times, just like, uh, you know, everybody else in the East Side. So, uh, something about the East Side that makes it very unique is the resilience of the people there. You know, everybody in the East Side has been has been there for a, for a long time, and it's the neglect that that the city and the government has given us that makes our culture unique and, and shows how resilient we are. Now, my big concern with this project is, aside from how ugly it is, is just that the impact that it's going to have on you know on the people that live around there. We've been displaced many times, and this just just might do it one more time. And you know, we can't afford these thousand dollar thousand dollar apartments, like the the person before me stated. You know, five hundred, six hundred is, is more or less what we've got, we've been able to afford our lives, and this is almost double that. And that's for the for the lower range. Um, you know, there's, the Eastside has been getting hit with gentrification very often, and there's another project down the street on Commerce known as Echo East that's just as ugly as this that will have the same impact as this will. So we're here, you know, to to, uh, to try to stop this, try to help, you know, conserve the bridge, the bridge, the view, where all the benefits and the, that that gives the the East Side residents what you know a little bit of what they deserve. This is a, a historically looted community that has has been. Um, you know, basically, uh, my slabs for projects like this to see if they kick off. And not only is it very non-creative, but it's just another replicated version of other things we see around the city. I don't know if the developer is here, or the investor, or whoever designed this, but it's really ugly, it's not creative, and, and the east side does not deserve this. Aside from the fourth story and, and blocking the view, we don't deserve something that's ugly in our community, and it just, it, you know, it just diminishes the art, the art and the creativity of our community, and what it also displaces us as well. Thank you for hearing this, and I hope you, you know, you, you swatch this once and for all, so we don't have to keep coming back here, and maybe they can go back to the boards and, uh, uh, spell bicycle the right way and design something better. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Diana Sines and I live in District 10. Um, Eastside community is actually part of the community as a whole of San Antonio, and the Hay Street Bridge is a big part of bringing that together. Um, with a lot of the organizations that we have with um, um, the cycling organizations that have used this, the running organizations, and also the yoga that has taken place on the bridge, um, it's shown the beauty of San Antonio. It's shown the beauty of the East Side. This is not beauty of the East Side. This would actually take away from the historical part of the bridge. And the stories you hear from people on the bridge that go back to revisit the bridge of the memories that they've had. Also from uh, that they were engaged on the bridge or they have their quinceanera pictures there, their photos there. Um, April Lines here in fact had um, the front of 720 Women magazine. It's always used for a lot of um, photo ops there. We would like to have that bridge remain a part of the community and have community access. This developer will be surrounding the entire bridge and will eventually limit access to the community. This thing right here is something that we couldn't see in any part of the city. Even District 1 wouldn't have something that looks like that. It, um, we want that to be part of the community. We want that one little square, that one fourth of all the land that he's eventually going to own. This looks like greed. It's a building of greed right there. If he could give that back to the community, that would be something we would be very, we would like to see some kind of a, a compromise. That might be a good compromise, since the way that uh, the land was received anyway was uh, in question. We'd like you guys to have that in consideration. Thank you.
with Ruben Martinez, followed by Carol Fisher. Hello, good evening. I'm Ruben Martinez, I'm uh, from Cattle, District 4. <clears throat> I, uh, me and my boys, we like to go to the bridge. Um, it's a beautiful place, kind of just iron and wood. When you look at it, I like to go and I always catch the best time when there's no one there. Um, and that can be any time, sometimes between 10 to midnight, sometimes um, from 10 to 11. When looking around, you see the chain tracks, there's some, there's, you know, you feel the rumble and the, the, the noise and everything. And seeing this building coming up, I'm thinking about it. And I'm like, you know, we're in 20, we're going into 2018. We're in 2018. You're building a building that's already been done before. I, t I was I was talking to some of the people on the team. Um, if you're gonna if if you are gonna build something, if you are gonna approve, which I hope we really, you know we need uh, all this stuff that I'm hearing. There is so much dirt that was swept under so many rugs, and all those rugs need to get beaten out. We need to figure it. We need to dig deep into the historical, deep into how all these deals, how we got to this place, reanalyze everything again. Because you see that the people are concerned. There's a lot of different issues. People are concerned with this, 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 that, and the other. There's just so much stuff here. So for us to be pushing and pushing an approval or a stamp or let's let's keep it going, let's get the next step, let's break ground, let's you know, hold on, slow that. Wait a minute. You know, we got plenty of time. Let's not rush this, let's not get married on, on one day. I keep saying that. I've used that before. And um, I think you understand what I'm saying when I say that. Um, so ultimately, in the end, I mean, I say if you're going to build a building, do something that America has never seen. Build like something revolutionary, like 90% um, recycled materials. I want like tires and um, hempcrete or whatever. I want something revolutionary. Put San Antonio on the map. Don't this this is you know this has been done a million times. If you're going to put if you're going to break ground, if you're going to do something. Make an awesome park, face on on the side facing the neighborhood where the neighborhood and the apartment people can use the park, communal gardening, whatever they need to. Make it a public space. This is for the community. This is not for profit. That bridge is not there to attract more profit. That bridge is there to attract the people from the community. And I live in District Four. I drive up and I find somewhere to park on the street closest to the bridge. And it's a gem, it's a diamond. Let that be for the people, not for a company or whatever, landlord, um, anything. Thank you guys, appreciate you. Ma'am, you have yielded your time. Uh, yeah, they called me up, so do you want me to go? Um, no, it looks like you signed in twice then. Okay. I just want to say, this meeting should be wired. There should, there's cameras in all of these walls. I don't understand why you're not doing that or paying a third party to have this live streamed. Okay. Next person is going to be Gary W. Houston, and he'll receive six minutes. Got a yawn. Uh, welcome, Mr. Rainey. It was a good show. But it's, it's going on. This uh, like, first of all, since I've got six minutes, and I think I'll only really need three for my substance, I want to make sure that everybody knows that who you've heard from uh, has played uh, a major role in getting this thing going. That's Doug Stepney is a former president of W. Simpson Associates Engineers, former president of Society of Professional Engineers, and, and really considered among engineers also kind of the dean of the engineering community. Graciela Sanchez mentioned that uh, last time that they doing some research, she came across a reference uh, in the San Antonio Express News Archives that during Hemisphere, Mr. Stedman was suggesting that the bridge really should be restored to the point of being a featured part of our new vision San Antonio back in the late 1960s. 
Virginia Nicholas, who you also heard from, heard from her first, is a former president of the Inside Public Conservation Society. For 20 years, she was president of the uh, Bear County Historical Commission. She is the reason that Union Pacific finally transferred title to the bridge from uh, to, uh, to the bridge to the city of San Antonio. Union, I, I don't know if any of you have ever dealt with railroads, but it can be very difficult to get anything moving. Virginia uh, made it happen, and she, as well as all of us, have an emotional tie to the That's the other thing that I, that I want to make sure that, that you appreciate here. Many and uh, Doug Stedman are two of the people who, in fact, persuaded the donors of the land on which this building would like to be built to donate that land uh, altogether. It wouldn't have happened without their role. You've heard a lot about the history of the bridge. We're not just concerned uh, about the bridge as an historic landmark. To appreciate that history, and uh, let, let's just look at a little context, you've got to be able to see the bridge. You've got to see the trusses and everything that Mr. Seven has been talking about. If that building blocks the sight lines to the bridge from a primary corner of Lamar and Cherry, which it will do, we will lose that iconic image of the bridge against the skyline. And that will be a tremendous loss to a city that prides itself in historic preservation. Now to my, my more substantive point, um, I would like for you to both know on this project as being non-inclusive. Uh, it uh, is non-inclusive because the building turns its back to the neighborhood. It's non-inclusive because the neighborhood would be looking at the back door of uh, that development. It's non-inclusive because the parking garage shouldn't be where uh, it's uh, designated to be. Uh, people who know more about these things than I do say that it, it, it really should be uh, underground. It's non-inclusive because the token retail, the two retail facilities there will not likely serve the neighborhood in any sort of great uh, way. Uh, uh, they clearly are, are there just to qualify for some of the advantages of the mixed use category. It's not inclusive because the Paseo that is part of the design underneath uh, the bridge uh, is uh, something that would link the building, the apartment complex, to uh, the brewery and would in fact create a private enclave again from which the neighborhood, the community, is exclusive, uh, excluded. It is uh, non-inclusive also because the uh, idea of the uh, view shed has not been adequately appreciated. The massing is not inclusive because it's higher than the bridge. Uh, the second, the shorter span of the bridge is uh, uh, really not much more than 50 feet. There are two spans there. It dominates that uh, shorter span, which the building is much closer to. The model suggested that the higher span was the full height. Well, that's not accurate. The, 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 the shorter span is, is lower, uh, absolutely. Uh, it's non-inclusive uh, because it does not, it wouldn't permit complete enjoyment uh, that the community has, has shared in the bridge itself. Now you mentioned fireworks displays. Well, uh, uh, some of the fireworks fanatics that I know say they love going July 4th because you can watch the fireworks displays downtown and you can watch the fireworks displays at Fort Sam Houston and all you have to do to enjoy them both is turn around. You will no longer be able to see Fort Sam Houston if that building goes up from, from the bridge. Uh, the, uh, it, it is not inclusive uh, because uh, the standards that it meets are standards that are not high enough. I can point out dormitories or, or barracks in this town that actually end up uh, making a better design statement and relating to their communities uh, better than this does. So uh, I ask that you vote no on the certificate of appropriateness because this building is inappropriate. Miguel A. Padilla, followed by Celeste Orta. 
Uh, my name is Miguel Padilla. I live on, uh, on the east, on the west side, but I work on the east side. I work on the 508 uh, Center Street, St. Paul United Methodist Church. I'm against this project because of many of the considerations that the persons have stated. Mainly it is about parking, parking space and places to walk. Uh, this has been a really nice place where we need to be gathering, an opportunity to go into exercise and walk. And by the, by the building of this, uh, they won't have that opportunity because of the lack of parking. And um, east side, in the, in the short time that I've been living on the east side, I've been noticed that this is a welcoming community, and this is a you know, that give anything of the welcoming community. So I am against this project. So thank you very much. Followed by Erica Heisel. Heisel. Hi, my name is Celeste Orta. I'm going to try to keep this as short because I'm a teacher, so I have to go to bed soon, and you know, so that has to happen. Um, I live at 321, 321 Lamar on. Um, I'm actually Caddy Cornish in this project. Uh, just to put in perspective a little bit closer, my dog got out and he actually ended up at Alamo Brewery, but the and Seymour has said that that gate is open, that you can go in at any time. And on Sunday, when my dog got out and was stuck in there for an hour, I was not able to get in. Um, I am against this project because as a resident for 26 years, that's how old I am. I was born and, uh, born and raised in dignity, I'm not planning to leave. Um, and I was here before it was school, before all the gentrification happened. And I have seen that when I went away from college to the University of Texas at Austin, that my neighborhood, what I, what I remember of my neighborhood from when I was 18 was that I left, you know, we we're still considered the hood. I came back, it's like, oh, everybody wants to move here. Those Cherry Street apartments came in. Uh, I've seen those become very uh, dilapidated, They're, the colors coming off. I'm not an architect, I was a history and African diaspora studies major, but I learned that I just from looking at these, I know that this isn't a quality project I, from what has been coming into my neighborhood. So that that is what I've seen. I've also, when I went to the meeting uh, last week at Alamo Brewery, I was actually harassed. I know like this bullying word has been used a lot tonight. I was actually harassed by one of Seymour's um, Guys, I my mother spoke out at that meeting, and she, me and her were actually followed by him leaving Alamo Brewery. We're, we're, were recorded on our way out, so I just felt that was important. Like as a community member, when we speak out, that I'm seen as a as a threat in some way. So uh, I wanted to mention that. Also, parking. Um, since I live so close, my parking is going to be affected in front of my house for me and my family. So. I, I just don't support this, and I don't see that being a reflection of the community and the community that I grew up in. So, thank you. Our next speaker is Erica Heisel, followed by Natasha Bakunda. Commissioners for your service to the city. My name is Erica Heisel. I actually reside in the woodlands of Camino Real in District 9. I am a real estate investor and own properties in District 5, 3, 2, as well as my homestead in 9 since 2005. As a business owner, I'm developing my first commercial building on South Hackberry Street in District 2. I do plan to headquarter my business activities there. I'm a member of three neighborhood associations. I'm a dues paying business member of Denver Heights, and it was a fellow Denver Heights Neighborhood Association member who invited me to speak here tonight. I'm also a member of Hot Wells, which is now called Mission Reach Hot Wells. They educated me on the Alliance for San Antonio, which is around 350 members who fought a similar apartment project within, within a thousand feet of the mission, so you can imagine um, that this is not the first time that this has happened. I really just have two quick points. Um, the bridge is clearly historic, and the purpose of the committee is to protect uh, view sheds of historic landmarks. Um, it's older than the Eiffel Tower. This was an interesting fact I learned. 1881, Eiffel Tower was 1889. And as a business owner, it's the second most Instagrammed photo of San Antonio. So as a business owner and developer, I don't think it's in the best interest of the city. You've heard how it's not in the best interest of the community. Think about future revenue and tourism, 
why people come here. They come here not only for the Alamo, but for other things that we have to offer as we've learned from the missions, just being dedicated as a World Heritage Site. So I'm not sure why staff approves it. I know that the building that I'm renovating on Hackberry um, was recommended by city staff to be demolished, and it was the Conservation Society who informed me that it's actually historic. So I'm taking the time, the effort, and the money to try to preserve something that is something that San Antonio um, has to offer that we don't really see in other cities of Texas. Um, so I'm just recommending that you uh, go against staff approval. Thank you for your time. Is Natasha Bakunda, followed by Barbara Garcia. Good evening. My name is Natasha Bakunda. I live at 722 in Mar. Um, first of all, I just wanted to say, let's say Ella Sanchez, Nettie Hinton, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Stedman, and Alex Bernal, and all your adorable people. It was I'm, by the way, on the uh, support side, so I'm the opposite of everyone that's been up here. Even though these people on the other side of me, I think they're amazing. And I'm so proud to be a part of the nation where people can come from all over the world to come and talk and make decisions about, um, about our little neck of the woods. So thank you, even though we're on opposite sides. Um, from everything that everyone said, I, I get it. There's so much room here that reasonable people can disagree. But I also want to talk about the most important thing to me, which is property rights. The fact is, Eugene Seymour owns that land. He could put up a tree house on it. It's his land. It's his land. But he got into a and crook as we were in the Supreme Court. I'm I, right now on it. I gave you a chance to speak. And I wasn't rude or interruptive. I can and be I would appreciate the same respect. Huh. It's also okay. um, and if people want to go back and revise um, what happened up until now, um, I'm sure they're welcome to do that. There's so many avenues to do that. But to, um, to sort of not have, I mean, we, we were blessed today to, to listen to our elder here, who kept a civil tongue in very wise heads. And we have to emulate them and try and be civil about this, no matter what side of the divide we're on. But every time something happens in our neighborhood, our neighborhood gets ripped apart. People can't talk to each other sometimes because we're on opposite sides of, of something that, I mean, it's a building, for heaven's sake. We're a neighborhood. We're bigger than this. No matter where we are, whether in support or in opposition, we have to understand that we're all human beings. We all have to be civil. We all have to respect and love each other. And, and Eugene Seymour is not just some faceless person. He's a human being, too. I think if we can just find a way to be civil, find a way to understand each other, and find a way to, to have wiser heads on our shoulders, I think that we could come to, to some sort of agreement about what to do with the lot. Uh, thank you very much. I think that's time. Our next citizen is Barbara Garcia, Garcia, followed by Nancy. He has a big opinion for him. He's a group that accompanied him. Alfred, maybe? He's gone to you. Good evening. Uh, thank you all for what you do and for staying so late. Uh, my name is Barbara Garcia. I live at 932 North Pine Street in Dignity Hill. Uh, I am in support of this project. I think it's a good project. I think it's needed. Uh, this type of housing, we don't have it in our neighborhood. And this is on the fringe of our neighborhood outside the historic district, so downtown. Uh, we currently don't have apartments in our neighborhood, uh, and this is affordable compared to what is available in our neighborhood. People wanting to work or working downtown want to live in our neighborhood, the Near East Side. You can't get something that's this nice for a thousand dollars or less. You can't. Um, I think this will benefit our neighborhood in a lot of ways. 
and I also think it will benefit the bridge. Um, I don't know how many of these people or you guys actually go up on the bridge a lot. My husband and I walk it all the time when we're walking our dogs. Uh, late at night, there's people sleeping up there. Uh, there's people drinking and smoking and other things going on. The graffiti is horrible. It goes up and down these historic trusses. And I think that, that this development will help with that. It'll be more eyes on the bridge. I think it will deter some of that kind of behavior. This bridge needs to be respected. Um, there's also a lot of misinformation going out that these people are signing all these petitions. They're being told the bridge is going to be sold to the developer, it's going to be restricted access, people won't be able to go up there, and that's not true. Uh, the, the bridge will be, the view of the bridge will be hindered from that corner, but if you walk half a block down, you can see it from Lamar Street, the whole entire bridge. So I think we need this kind of development. Uh, change is always hard, but our neighborhood is, is changing. Gentrification has already taken place. This is not going to make it worse. So I hope you guys will, excuse me, some respect. I listen to all of you guys, like Natasha said. Um, gentrification has taken place. There's, there's, you can't buy a house for less than three hundred thousand um, dollars. So I do That's appreciate time. you guys and hope you vote in favor. Our next citizen to be heard is I think it's Nancy Alfred, followed by Juan A. Garcia. Hi, um, my name is Nancy Alfred. I live at 923 North Pine Street in Dignity Hill, about four blocks from the uh, proposed um, development. Tonight I represent um, 43 members of our community who are in support of this um, development. And I would like to um, read to you the statement of support that has been uh, provided for the commission so that, um, and, and I also provide with the remainder of the signatures that I have here, um, so that you can understand why we are in support of it. The purpose of this statement is to voice our support for the proposed apartments at 803 North Cherry Street. The Near East Side and Dignity Hill are currently undergoing rapid changes as investment in this area of the city has accelerated over the last few years. In our view, this is the kind of project that can advance economic and business development. We support uh, the project for the following reasons. The property is zone D downtown, so the project is compliant with downtown de development guidelines. The property is outside the adjacent to the Dignity Hill uh, Historic District. This project will provide badly needed workforce housing that will bring at least 148 new residents into the area. The Merchant Ice Building, which is three blocks away from 803 North Cherry Street, was recently sold to the Texas Research and Technology Foundation and has the potential for bringing 200 jobs to the Near East Side. Some of these people may want housing near their work. The project will provide needed retail in the area. The project has the potential to energize the area around the Hay Street Bridge and make it less desirable for criminal activity. Other considerations. The first, the view shed. We understand that there is no view shed protection for the Hay Street Bridge. In fact, view shed protection was applied for in April 2015. No action was taken by the HDRC as the applicant eventually withdrew the request. There's no city ordinance, obligation, or even expectation that anyone has a right to a view. The original landscape plan from the city of San Antonio was tailored 
to accentuate views from the bridge, not views of the bridge. The opposition, we want to make clear that groups that have spoken against this project, such as the Esperanza Group or the Hay Street Bridge Restoration Group, do not speak for the neighborhood. That's time. Thank you. Our next listening speaker is John A. Garcia, followed by Marilyn Davis. Good evening. My name is Juan Garcia. I live in 932 North Pine and and I'm a past president of the Network Association as well. <clears throat> um, I'm not going to get into any of the design issues that are before you guys. But I just want to make sure that you understand that our support or my support for the project has to do more with bringing needed housing to the east side. Um, there's workforce housing, and people are saying it's not affordable, perhaps it's not. But we need this kind of housing that's multifamily uh, near downtown. People calling all the time asking about the prices in real estate and dignity. And basically, the housing stock has become uh, unaffordable and taking a good bill. So, this would be a great option for folks who want to live downtown. Uh, I almost agree with Tony. It's Mr. Tony, I mean, there's no apartment building in San Antonio that's exactly beautiful. I mean, they're just functional. The functional housing units, and that's what we need to say. Thank you so much. Our next speaker is Jose Luis Rodriguez, followed by Aaron uh, Rebelsdorf. Hello, can everyone hear me okay? I just want to say, um, it's actually Marlon Davis. Um, yes. I apologize, Marlon Davis. That's fine. Um, so my name is Marlon Davis. I was born and raised in East Side, specifically District 2. And so I don't want to waste my time kind of reiterating the points that people have made. I just have a couple of questions to keep in mind as we consider this uh, proposal. Um, first and foremost, uh, when you speak to the people who actually live here, um, it is true that many of them don't know anything about the development, but you do find out that there are some that do, and the people who do know the most about the development are actually the transplants themselves. So this sort of begs the question, um, who is this development for? Um, if the public is not consulted and the public is not involved in the process, it's not something they want, then who is this for? And more importantly, um, the majority of the housing around the you know, is you know, a richest majority, and something as this, developments of this type have proven that they only increase property value. And so that brings to the next question. Um, in a city that has declared a crisis of inequality, why does Eugene Seymour want to widen the gap? Um, the bridge was preserved on community efforts. People like Miss Hinton, people like Mr. Stein, Stenberg, I'm sorry, Stedman, I'm sorry. Um, and so when you, when you look at it, you have to understand this isn't just um, this anachronism. This is quite literally their life's work. When you shove that out of the civic process now, um, you're not just developing this bridge, you're burning this one. And so we have to understand, you know, it's been 300 years, and in the coming tricentennial, San Antonio is not the only um, city that's facing the tricentennial next year. You can actually look at New Orleans and their own website, and they have a very different approach as of ours. They're funding infrastructure projects, community, um, community interests, um, they're restoring the city on a community level, and so we have to ask ourselves, it has been 300 years, when are we going to listen to our community as well as we do capital? Uh, Aaron Ruddersdorf, followed by Yenneth Flores. Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Aaron Ruddersdorf. I live at 514 North Pine in Dingwood Hill. Uh, earlier this year, I became a first time home buyer. Uh, chose Dingwood Hill for a few reasons. You know, the charming historic homes, proximity to downtown, and all of its amenities. Um, you know, a lot of my friends have moved here in the last year or two. And, and also, just in the past, I guess, years since I've been here, just seeing the vibrancy of, of, of the community at Dingwood Hill. You know, um, Liz and everyone with the Big Jazz and, and San Antonio Beer Fest um, in the park, kickball, uh, grabbing a beer, watching Spurs game, thinking what he beats. You know, just seeing the violence change in just a short period of time and all the bars and restaurants are open. Um, this particular development I'm, I'm in favor of. You know, I think it has diversity of the housing stock. I think it also helps uh, extend that vibrancy that, that Dingwood Hill already has. and. 
kind of revitalizes that economic dead zone in between downtown and Dignity, that industrial uh, corridor. Um, I think you know, getting 150 more people down here at a minimum, um, spending their money, local businesses, encouraging future investment in this, in this neighborhood. I think it's a great thing for the for the for the city and for the neighborhood. Um, so I encourage you to vote there. Our next citizen to speak is Yana Flores, followed by, let's see, Garrett Armando. Ooh. Hola, uh, my name is Yana Flores. I live at 6222 UTSA Boulevard. I'm a, dist I'm a resident of District 8. And uh, as you can probably tell, uh, I go to the UTSA. I'm a senior, and I'll be graduating uh, next year. I'm um, from San Antonio. I grew up here. I moved, of course, for school. So, normally I'm the type of person that uh, this millennial complex wants to forget, right? Millennial, um, graduated from college. I guess uh, the only difference is, is that I wouldn't want to live there. Uh, one, the apartment is, as we all have uh, said tonight, ugly. Uh, I really would not pay money to live here. Uh, second, it's unaffordable. Unaffordable, unaffordable to most people, including millennials. Uh, I live in student housing, uh, which is, I'm sure we can all agree, a ripoff. Uh, and it's more convenient, it gives me more space, and it's worth less than these complexes. Uh, another thing is that I would, without a second thought, not support uh, a complex that's contributing to gentrification of a city that I now call my home and I love uh, quite a lot. So, uh, we did write a couple of things. Um, so I urge you, uh, as the members of the HDRC committee, uh, committee to uh, protect the High Street Bridge and to ensure the private interest is kept on public lands. When I first visited the High Street Bridge, uh, I think four years ago, I was a little shocked that there's absolutely no parking. Uh, it's so hard to get to the bridge. You have to park on the street. Uh, why aren't we making maybe making a Park a lot, or instead of park, because uh, as I've heard, as I've researched myself, that was promised to our community. Uh, we were promised to park, and we are still left with this promise. Instead, what we're getting is um, it's a bit of an eyesore. So um, uh, clearly, this project is corruption at its finest. Uh, everybody has spoken tonight about what went on uh, behind uh, the scenes, right? The way that this land was <laughs> kind of stolen from the community and what they want to do with it. I ask you guys to be realistic and compassionate in your decision. Please think of the people. Think of the east side. Uh, I don't live on the east side, but I can tell you that that's not something that they want. I would hate to see a city that I now call my home become another Austin. I didn't move to Austin. I moved to San Antonio. Uh, as, a as a committee, I ask that you take into account the close to 16 thousand uh, San Antonio residents who have signed both both the online petition and the ground petition as well. Uh, and please stand in opposition to this unethical project. Many voices here tonight have spoken uh, against it, and many have as well in the past. We do not want this. Uh, think of the east side, not of the greedy people and time have manipulated this project in their favor. Thank you. is Garrett Marmando, followed by Amy Holland. I've already spoken. Amy Holland is next, followed by Artis Holland. My name is Amy Holland, I live at 1112 Burnett. My husband and I moved to Dignity Hill five years ago because of the Alamo Brewery coming in. We felt that it gave a new vibrancy to our neighborhood. I feel this also gives the same vibrancy. I ask you to vote in favor of this because I look forward to the new neighbors that I'm going to meet in the bridge. Thank you. <laughs> Next is the speaker is Evan Collin, followed by David Cruz. Harvest Holland. 1112 Burnett, Big Woody Hill. Also in favor, as is my wife. I want to bring up the great views of fireworks downtown that 
people have, and I want to agree with Barbara Garcia, that walking across this bridge from midnight to 7 a.m. is not such a great thing. When I ride my bicycle over at 6.30 to 7 in the morning, I have to dodge the people sleeping there. I have to dodge the puddles of whatever are on the bridge and the litter on the bridge. Which I also want to bring up, Eugene Seymour sends his crews up to clean the litter off the bridge that the city does not do. He's a responsible business owner under the bridge. If that area were to become a park, where do you think more people are going to be sleeping? There are already six parks within half a mile, two of them two blocks away. We don't need another park. The city doesn't want another park. Parking. Sorry, excuse me one second, sir. For people who complain about bullying, being rude, and interrupting someone else is another form of bullying. So please be aware of that and how it reflects upon you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, parking to use the bridge, see the bridge, see downtown from the bridge. True, people currently illegally park on his property and use it as a parking lot. The other foot of the bridge, now the city has built a parking lot under I-37. There is parking available for use on the bridge. I'm in favor. I hope you vote to let the project be built. Thank you. Our next citizen to be heard is David Cruz, followed by uh, Susanna Segura. Yes, good evening. My name is David Cruz, and I live at 11635 Temptation Street. And I'm here to voice my concern about blocking the view shed, and I hope you don't let this project move forward. I also think it's kind of funny that the city would spend all this effort to preserve the bridge and then block the view shed and damage the neighborhood. Uh, as far as people sleeping places, well, that's a social uh, issue that we could solve better than pointing fingers and, and that kind of thing. So, uh, I just, I think that with all the controversy of this project, I think there, it's, it should be, you know, it should be reconsidered, and I don't think it should actually go forward. Thank you. Followed by uh, Graciela Sanchez, who will receive nine minutes. I ask that my time not start yet until she can access this. Susana Segura. I'm from the 300 block of Idaho. I don't feel comfortable stating my exact address uh, because I do feel a lot of tension coming from uh, developers. I just want to remind you that Eugene Seymour has a pattern. Uh, he did apply to the National Register of Historic Places for the Frederick Building and along with Miller purchased that building at a very low cost rate. The city gave him a lot of economic incentives and out of 500,000 square feet, he was only able to develop 10,000 square feet of office space and another 5,000 square feet. And that building was never environmentally remediated or abated. It was uh, a city landmark and he came to you and asked that you lift that landmark designation. Uh, you said no. They then went to the city, and the city said, okay, you know, if the developer can't do anything with it, we want to make sure that someone can. And it was as simple as that. But the building is still listed on the National Register of Historic Places. 
Same thing happened with Merchant's Ice House. He filed an application to the National Register of Historic Places, took a lot of incentive money from the city, and like a moth to a flame, here he is at the Hay Street Bridge. Um, you know, and what I am asking is that he not be allowed to build on that property um, to block the viewshed of the bridge. There are many other places across the United States that have a very beautiful view. Uh, as you can see in this video, uh, that's from the view from the top of the bridge. So even blocking the view of the neighborhood from the bridge or blocking the view of the bridge uh, from the street level is unacceptable. It's really embarrassing, I think, um, when folks from the National Register are contacting me and asking me what's going on in San Antonio. We lose the Univision building and we're about to lose the viewshed for this Hay Street Bridge. You know, you are the stopping point. You are the Historic and Design Review Commission. Y'all are the experts. Y'all should be able to tell us what is possible and what is not possible. I don't know how, um, other than I know Seymour's really good personal friends with ex-mayor Phil Hartberger that's been publicized in the Express News. Uh, he's been on yachting trips with him, boating trips, and somehow he has a connection still. And he somehow he manages to convince architects, developers, engineers. I don't know how y'all get away with it. I mean, it's time. Shame on OHP for supporting this project. The next person to be heard is Graciela Sanchez, and she'll receive five minutes. Buenas tardes, good evening. My name is Graciela Sanchez and I live at 233 Lotus in District 1. But it, uh, the area is also about five minutes. I live close to the Hay Street Bridge, about five minutes away. I am the director of the Esperanza Peace and Justice Center, um, a citywide organization that was invited to participate in this whole conversation back in 2012 by the, the Hay Street Bridge Restoration Group because of the work they saw the Esperanza doing for the historic west side of, of San Antonio. And I'm also a member of the West Side Preservation Alliance. I was born and raised in San Antonio and I am committed to making this city be responsible and respectful to those of us who were born and raised here and who want to continue living in the city for the rest of our lives. I also welcome all new residents to the city as long as they respect and honor the history, culture, and values of a majority of its residents and not just those who are connected to the powerful of this city. Today's vote is based on reviewing the future development in relationship to the downtown design guidelines. I'd like to remind us of some of those principles. The design principles for creating a livable downtown on page 13 in the downtown design guide states, design on a human scale, compact pedestrian friendly communities allow residents to walk to shops, services, cultural resources and jobs and can reduce traffic congestion and benefit people's health. The current design is not pedestrian friendly, gives its back to the historic neighborhood is so huge that it covers up the historic bridge and puts the community in the shadow of this monstrosity. Vibrant, build vibrant public spaces is another element. Citizens need welcoming, well-defined public spaces to stimulate face-to-face -face interaction, collectively celebrate and mourn, encourage civic participation, admire public art, and gather for public events. The land below the bridge is the only space that allows for the public space. The current design for public space that you have for this project is so small that only the residents of the apartments or those who drink or hang out at Alamo Brewery will have access to this quite limited public space. Another element is create a neighborhood identity, a quote, sense of place 
gives neighborhoods a unique character, enhances the walking environment, and creates pride in the community. This building will destroy the neighborhood identity. Even the Dignity Neighborhood Association, the Bridge Apartments of UB Limited, will have to change their letterhead to better stress the new and much more limited view of the iconic bridge that we now see. We will no longer be able to see the full view of the city from the bridge because although the new building will be a few feet away, it will still be a building so huge that it will erase view from the bridge when standing across this new building. Another element is protect environmental resources. Quote, a well-designed balance of nature and development preserves natural systems, protects waterways from pollution, reduces air pollution, and protects property values. The community will no longer be able to feel the northern wind or feel the back and forth of the wind as one currently can when up on the bridge since the new building will block it. And another element is conserve landscapes, which I think speaks to, again, public spaces, which I already spoke about. Design matters. Design excellence is the foundation of successful and healthy communities. As you have heard, the members of the Dignity Architectural Design Committee have already raised many concerns since May 2017. And we know that the architects and developers have not responded to their requests and concerns. What we see here in their design is similar to four and five story apartment buildings that can be found at the Pearl up and down Broadway and elsewhere. But again, uh, do not make any sense by the Hay Street Bridge. The building design. Identify individual projects as they are the building blocks of great streets and neighborhood, neighborhoods. This requires particular attention to the way the building meets the sidewalk, providing the transition to pedestrian scale and elements that activate the street. Respect historically significant districts and buildings, including massing and scale and neighborhood context, while at the same time encouraging innovative architectural design that expresses the identity and authenticity of an urban San Antonio. The Hay Street Bridge abuts to the Dignity Historic Neighborhood. We should really be adding more concerns in the design of this building, which is next to this local and national historic bridge. Massing and street wall. Design building massing to reinforce the street wall with well-scaled elements or structures that are sensitive to the neighborhood context. We don't, we've heard from many people that this is not true. Monolithic slab-like structures that wall off views and overshadow the surrounding neighborhood are discouraged. Again, this is your own language or the downtown design language. Another one, a new building should be, to the extent possible, maintain the alignment of horizontal elements along the block. That means that they should be one to two stories or one and a half stories as surround the, the bridge. This is not taking place. And floor to floor heights should appear to be similar to those seen in the area. They are not. Our desire to have u ship protection was requested by the community as early as 2011 when the San Antonio Conservation Society wrote a letter to then Councilwoman Ivy Taylor. Taylor, who was not interested in using this line as a park because she did not want homeless people in her neighborhood, ignored the request. And I say this very clearly because that's what she said, I do not want homeless people. I was at the meeting and she said it several times at several meetings I was at. In 2015, after the Hay Street Bridge Restoration Group won a jury verdict against the city of, the San, of San Antonio, the city appealed the case and the court asked us to mediate. Our request is the historic, Hay Street Historic Neighborhood Association was view shed protection of the bridge, bathrooms, and a water for the hike and bike trail that was part of it. The city under now Mayor, Mayor Ivy Taylor said no again. And in May 2015, Office of Historic Preservation submitted viewshed protection for the Hay Street Bridge. Unlike what we heard at last week's community meeting and even today, um, it, it, it mentioned that the HDRC voted viewshed down. What we understand is the Office of Historic Preservation, who submitted the proposal, pulled it because they didn't feel that maybe there were enough votes. But they pulled it, you all didn't vote on it. So, three different moments that people have attempted to do view shit and because of the political powers, we don't, you all haven't even gotten to vote for it or it hasn't gone before city. 
However, we have an opportunity. On November 21st, 2017, City Council members signed a CCR requesting viewship protection for the Hay Street Bridge and other important buildings in our city. So it's not just the, the five uh, missions that we're protecting, but because the city has that much more, but Hay Street Bridge is very essential. We now know that the city's film commission gets the most requests for permits to film the bridge and views from the bridge and to the bridge. This new development will ha hamper the city's most film, most photograph, most Instagram structure in the city. Is this what we want? Political backroom deals have been influencing the entire development over, under, and around Hay Street Bridge. The developers are the only ones who will benefit at the community's loss if you approve the design today. The losers will be everyone in here, and the future generations of people will no longer be able to view the bridge from the street level and see the entire city from the bridge level. We will no longer have the 360-degree view of the area. We will no longer feel the wind blow when, we, when it is blocked with this four-story building and the future building that they intend to add to link to the bridge for their restaurant. You HDRC, HDRC members need to say no to this development. You need to ask the city to write up new design guidelines for the downtown design guidelines. At this time. This is what we're planning. There's a whole section on the river. There should be a section on the historic Hay Street Bridge. And because it's not here, I don't think you have the ability to not Micah for you all to do the right to to have the right criteria to vote on this. Thank you very much. Christelle A. Orta Puente, and and I live at um, 431 Fir, which is District 7. And my grandparents lived on the east side, and um, I grew up on the east side quite a bit. And uh, my great grandmother lived on the east side. And I just want to remind people there's a reason why. The east side is a predominantly black and brown community, and that is because of segregation. The house I live in right now, sorry, I get really nervous. Uh, my grandparents could not have lived in that house because in the paperwork when I bought my house, it said specifically that Mexicans and Negroes are not allowed to live there. So there's a reason why this issue is very sensitive to people, and I, um, I feel that outsiders sometimes have a difficult time understanding. Uh, so my name is Christelle uh, Orta Puente. I'm a local ethnographic photographer, and one of my specialties is photographing historical buildings. When I was informed this view was endangered, I set out to capture the best view of the photo I could. The photo I took on August 17th highlights the entire structure of the Hay Street Bridge from the best perspective. 
left available to capture the entire bridge. This includes our iconic cityscape. This exact location happens to be within the middle of where the four-story complex would be built, a location that is currently within a chain-link fence installed by Eugene Seymour Company. We don't often see a jewel in the rough until um, someone comes along and sheds light on beauty in plain sight. We cannot imagine what is possible until someone shows us their dream. And that's what I'm here to do. Um, my, pho my photo and why I did this is, is my responsibility as a native San Antonio resident. Like I said, I'm a local um, ethnographic photographer and um, said I feel like this is my responsibility. Historic preservation is self-preservation for those of us who have roots here for centuries. It is the answer to the loss of cultural identity in the name of new development that we have been erasing in San Antonio for decades. So accuracy. Um, when I looked at the drawings and um, perspectives that were shown, I kind of questioned it. So um, if you look here at this image, um, I used the second tree, the little small tree right there for reference, and all the following images were taken with a 50 millimeter lens, which is the closest to human viewpoint. The architect image shows a much smaller tower and a step further back from the second tree, which I used as my reference point. Um, this would be somewhere inside the retail store of the complex itself. Therefore, this um, perspective would actually not be possible to be seen because you would be inside the retail space. Next. Um, this is where the I think the developer was standing. You can see where the red arrow is there. Um, the next picture. Um, where you go, you go back. Yeah, it's okay. The next um, picture right there says KAP, that's me. And that's where I was standing to try to get the closest viewpoint. And you can see um, I would probably still catch part of the building um, if I was trying to take a picture. Um, the final one, I went ahead and I um, photoshopped in where I thought that building would be. And it would be blocking, still blocking, part of the view of the bridge. Next. So I wanted to show you this a little closer. Um, it is taken from the viewpoint closest I could get to the angle of the bridge um, to replicate the architect's photo of the fence. And if you notice, you do not see the tower and you do not see the cityscape um, like he had in his image. Which again, the cityscape is what gives this um, a point of reference. Um, so this is taken from the farthest corner. I was standing about maybe like uh, five feet in, standing against the fence. And this is the viewpoint. And I believe from this viewpoint, you would be blocking that in part of the bridge. So as I put right here, um, I was standing close to Cherry, and um, the edge of the building blocked the edge of the bridge from this perspective. Yeah. So HDRC, like Graciela, um, noted, um, talked about the standards. Um, his, what it says here is respect historically significant districts and buildings, including massing and scale and um, neighborhood context, while at the same time encouraging innovative, innovative architectural design that expresses the identity and authenticity of urban San Antonio. Um, and she read some of this on the other side, and I'm sure you guys are familiar with it. <coughs> Um, but I, I felt it was important for the people here to also know what it states up next. Okay. So design. Um, as many people have said, uh, this is not a very attractive building. Um, if you look at the first picture right here, um, you cannot necessarily distinguish that those drawings were not done for the pearl. And if you look at the picture next to it, it basically looks like what they did was copy exactly what was done at the Pearl time. I just put it here. Does anyone have time? Would somebody like to give me time? I don't think anybody else has any left. Is 
Development is endangering. Without the cityscape in view to give context, it becomes just a beautiful photo taken in an unnoted city. An example of the magnitude of ignoring Viewshed is a Pearl Brewery development. While its activation is considered a success, the 10 story building and surrounding development dwarf the once dramatic view that could be seen from every direction. The bridge has become an iconic location shown in countless advertisements, engagement photos, police department promotions, and the rebranding of San Antonio video. Hay Street Bridge is one of the top Instagram locations in San Antonio. This view has potential to become another iconic San Antonio image, as iconic and recognizable as a photo of the San Antonio skyline and the Alamo. This view is not only something the residents of San Antonio should be able to enjoy and appreciate, but also the tourists that come to spend their money in our city. I think that over 15,000 online signatures reflect that many people who live outside the east side of San Antonio see this view as something extremely important. So um, this was taken from the back of my truck um, so I could get a viewpoint over the fence. You know this. Uh, this is on the corner. So this is the drain. This is the park. And this is my and um, Photoshop class, this is what you can do next. So I just kind of highlighted here some of what I put in. Um, the lighted artwork is done by local artists, Momo and Bumpa, who use um, a lot of repurposed metal, which I thought could be repurposed from um, railroad right there. Um, landscaping, um, public restrooms, like the one we have downtown, going to our path, um, we could have food trucks, along the side of Mr. Seymour's parking lot, um, multicolored solar lighting under the bridge, and a small fenced dog park under the bridge um, to help people, uh, protect people from sun and rain. Um, this would be a great element for the neighbors. And um, presence and absence. The complex would move forward will block the view of this 100 plus year old gem. The gesture reached back to the mandated segregation of the east side, robbing, res robbing residents of an iconic symbol they take pride in and work hard to save in order to connect the east side to the heart of the city. We have more issues than just one tied up here. There are so many rolled up into this complex. It has come to represent more than just development, like the bridge itself. It has come to represent more than just a structure. What is seen as a symbol of pride, and what is seen as a symbol of continued oppression and division. I leave you with this thought. We often do not completely understand the magnitude of the presence of something That's until true. we miss it. Presence and absence. Thank you. Our last two citizens to be are Natalie Rodriguez, followed by the final citizen to be heard, Gloria A. Ramirez. Natalie Rodriguez and I live at 4400 Horizon Hill and I'm going to read a letter on behalf of the members of the WPA Historic Landmark Designation Subcommittee um, but I also just want to let you all know that um, I brought along um, at least 500 um, signatures from um, petitions by community members and I helped to fill out so if we need to submit that, I have that. And also, um, I just graduated recently from UTSA, and I do work um, full time. And even working over 40 hours a week, I would not be able to comfortably pay $1,000 and still have money for gas and food and, um, you know, just to live like 
happily and comfortably. So um, here's the letter. Dear Mr. Guarino, we, the, the membership of the Westside Preservation Alliance, WPA, write in support of the residents of the historic Digno Whitney Hills neighborhood, concerned with preserving the public space and view shed of the historic Hay Street Bridge, in which the proposed four-story apartment retail building at 803 North Cherry Street will obstruct. As a community-based historic preservation organization concerned with preserving the history and culture of working class communities in San Antonio in general, and the West Side in particular, and as a tax paying residence of San Antonio, we want to be we want to ensure that the view from the iconic Hay Street Bridge not be denied to the public. Specifically, the WPA is opposed to the proposed structure because it would block the view of the bridge from the surrounding streets. Only residents and other tenants of the proposed apartment mixed-use complex would have the privilege of enjoying the view of the iconic bridge against the downtown skyline. In brief, the bridge would be privatized for the benefit of a privileged view. We, step, we steadfastly oppose the privatization of public space. The bridge and the view of it from the neighboring streets, streets is one of the precious few remaining landmarks on the east side. Access to the public view should be protected, not obliterated. Proponents of the proposed structure would have us believe that the brewery and apartment building are the stimulants for the revival and growth of this immediate neighborhood. <clears throat> Actually, the catalyst of the revival is the bridge itself. It has become a major icon of San Antonio's skyline, an icon which not only attracts tourists and residents alike to the east side, but also new businesses, including the brewery and now the proposed four-story structure at 803 North Cherry. It is the bridge itself and being able to view it without obstruction that is the draw. From our perspective, privatizing that view to the benefit of a privileged view, denying the view to the general public is not only counterproductive, it is con con that's contradictory. It belies the equity lens, the equity lens that Mayor Nirenberg has defined as the guiding principle by which San Antonio is to be governed. We ask you and HDRC commissioners to act on behalf of the public to protect the view shed of the Hay Street Bridge to ensure it remains public space and not to privatize it. Sincerely, the West Side Preservation Alliance. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Gloria Ramirez, and I live on Riddle Street, just down the street from the Hay Street Bridge. Uh, I find it ironic every time I'm at this center that it is called the Cliff Morton Development and Business Center, because how can a developer be honored with the name of this center who will represent the people of San Antonio and the interests of the person on the street who does not have in their mind making a dollar. When it comes to the person that made the brewery, Mr. Gene Seymour, I have a deep compassion for him because he is ruled by the almighty dollar and it will not stop with the brewery. It will not stop with this building. It will continue. In his plans, if I recall correctly, he had dreamed of taking over half of the Hay Street Bridge and allowing runners to run by as he set up dining tables for diners in his restaurant. There is more to this than meets the eye. There is more than just blocking the view shed than just putting up homes at a thousand dollars a month, which I could not afford. I am a retired school teacher. I was fortunate enough to have chosen San Antonio as my home 40 years ago, <coughs> a refugee from Austin, Texas. I was foresighted enough to come here because I appreciated the culture and the language of this city. And I wanted to work as a bilingual educator, teaching children to be proud of who they were 
because I finally, after 40, 50, 60 years, was proud of who I was. And Austin, Texas did not reflect who I was. San Antonio, Texas does. The Hay Street Bridge reflects what I believe in. It reflects in working for neighborhoods and for gente, people. There are people here that have made the Hay Street Bridge their livelihood, their life's work. Mr. and Mrs. Stedman among them. And there are others. Maddie Hinton is another. Gary is another. And there are many more. Those are the people that preserved this bridge, raised money, paid for it, got a park, donated to the city, got a, a, a land that was donated to the city because it was thought that it was going to be a park. But money rules. And I'm very cynical. <laughs> That's why I don't like to come up here and speak anymore. Thank you.